Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another part of the Moving to Spain series. Today, I wanna actually go into depth about the truths and the lies of the tax situation on the digital nomad visa. Now, if you haven't watched any of my previous videos, I'm applying for the Spain digital nomad visa and I've been going through the process of gathering information and gathering my documents and talking to lawyers and reading forums and pages and literally endless amounts of information to try and figure out what is actually true, what's happening, all those updates. So in this video, I wanna talk specifically about the taxes because there were headlines all over when this visa was first starting to be announced and the headlines were trying to make it seem like it was a super attractive visa for digital nomads. Now I'm not saying it isn't an attractive visa for digital nomads, but there are stipulations and things that you need to dig and know about before applying for this visa or before thinking you have a certain tax bracket when you most likely don't. So number one, the first headline that came out was saying that digital nomads were gonna get a 15% tax break due to this new law and this new visa for Spain. Here to tell you that is absolutely completely false. So the digital nomad visa is a part of the startup law for Spain, trying to get more businesses and remote workers coming to live in Spain. Obviously Spain makes money off of that. And so, startups that actually start their companies in Spain are able to get that 15% tax break. However, we as digital nomads do not. So that was the myth number one busted on that end. And then number two, the myth of whether or not digital nomads will be paying the 24% flat tax rate with the Beckham law with this visa. So with my last video, if you guys watched on the requirements for the Spain digital nomad visa as of that date, I was talking about how it wasn't actually 15%, it was 24%. Now I hate to break it to you and tell you that not everyone actually even qualifies for the 24%. So all of my self-employed and freelancers, I'm here to break the news to you that we do not qualify. We will not be able to get that 24% tax break. And there actually is no incentive for freelancers or self-employed people on this visa. You will actually be dropped into the normal autonomo tax brackets of Spain, which basically means that there's different brackets based on the amount of income you're earning for how much you're taxed. So I'll put the brackets up here so you can see and quickly explain them because I didn't actually know how this worked until it was explained to me. So say you made $60,000 as an example, you would take from the first 12%, you pay that 19% tax. And then after that, they deduct that 12% from your total. And then you pay the next percent, 24% on the next bracket, and then it goes down and down until your income obviously has been fully paid for. So you'll be dumped into that tax bracket to know what you're actually paying at the end of the year. However, it's a bit more complicated than that. And that's definitely why I wanted to jump on here and make this video for you guys and give you some educational information on this visa because there is so much wrong and incorrect and complete bullshit, honestly, information out there regarding this. I spoke to two different lawyers and I've also, like I said, read plenty of forums on this and I've seen so many questions being asked and consultants answering, kind of giving a more update. So with that update, I will say nothing is set in stone yet. These are the updates as of the last week of February. And as of right now, that is what we know. So you can currently apply for the visa within Spain. So some of the details are known, but there's really unknowns as to what the government's going to do tax wise. So until that information is fully at the consulates and everything is completely finalized, this is information we're getting so far. Things also may change from what I'm learning and from what I've been told. The Spanish government has a tendency to just change things and change minds and updates and make some amendments to things as it goes. But I'm really curious to see the final details because there are a lot of questions in the air, but this is facts of what we know right now. So I just wanted to share this information with you. So back to the self-employed and freelance people, this is gonna be mainly what this video is about. I will touch briefly on the employees at the end of this and remote workers, but my case is self-employed and freelancer. So I definitely know more information regarding that side of things. So anyone who is self-employed or a freelancer 
freelancer, this is pretty much how your taxes work. My lawyer kind of broke it down to me, so I'm gonna give you some information to make you understand how the process will work to see if this makes sense for you applying for the Spain Digital Nomad Visa. So the way it would work is quarterly, you'd be filing your taxes with Spain. So you'd register as an autonomo, so you'd be a freelancer in Spain. You'd be paying the quarterly taxes and you're taxed a flat rate of 20%. So that 20% would be the automatic fee that you'd be paying for your taxes. And then, like I said, at the end of the year, they will dump your full income that you've made into the tax brackets to see the extra percentage that you owe. You will be owing more than 20% total. So based on your brackets, you will know how the extra percentage is. Now, one thing that I found out recently that hasn't been really discussed a lot and people are really starting to question is originally the visa said that you need private health insurance. However, if you are a freelancer or self-employed in Spain and you are registering as Autonomo, you will be paying and contributing into the social security system of Spain. The first year, the first 12 months, you'll be paying an automatic 80 euros per month for the first year. And then after that, it's based on 30% of your income for what you can pay and it's up to, I think, the cap of 500 euros per month that you'd be contributing to social security dependent on, remember, dependent on what your income actually is and the level you're at. Now, the social security is deductible on your taxes, but you will be paying into the Spanish social security system as a freelancer or someone who is self-employed. So there definitely are things to think about before you apply for this visa. It's very confusing right now. There's a lot of misinformation out there and there's a lot of unknowns. But as of now, that is what we know based on the information that the lawyers have from within Spain. So you just should know that based on your own circumstances, this visa might make sense for you and it might not because there actually is no technical tax incentive for anyone who's freelance or self-employed. So the decision based on your own circumstances is something you have to make on whether this visa will work for you and actually make sense for you. If you're non-European and you wanna live in Europe, this is probably a great option for you. There are other countries like Portugal and Croatia and some others that have visas available you can always look into, but Spain just has a piece of my heart. So now for employees, remote workers, you can be able to apply for the 24% flat rate Beckham law, which means that even at the start of $1, you are taxed 24% all the way up to 600,000. But your tax situation is gonna be a bit more complicated. I don't know all the ins and outs. From what I've been told, you will still be paying your taxes to your home country. As long as your country has a social security agreement in place with Spain, then you'll be paying your regular taxes are taken out of your paycheck to your home country. Then at the end of the year, you would be taking your tax return that you file, say if you're from the US, and then you'd file it with Spain, and then they would base it off of the dollar amount you, that you would technically owe on that 24% and see if you owe any more to Spain. Now there is a tax treaty in a lot of countries, so you wouldn't be double taxed by any means. It would just mean the amount that you paid, say to the US, dollar for dollar would be deducted from the amount that you owe Spain to see if you owe any extra. Now, not 100% sure if every remote employee will actually qualify for the 24% Beckham Law. If not, then you'd be dropped into the normal brackets as I explained earlier, and then you would just be paying whatever the difference is, if there is any difference, to Spain on your taxes. So I know this is very confusing and I know things are all over the place, but I'm trying to keep you guys as updated as possible and I will keep making updates as I get the visa and as more information comes out so everyone can kind of just stay up to date on everything you need to know and make good informed decisions. But I did wanna jump on here for all my freelancers and self-employed people to let you know what the actual deal is. And let me tell you one thing I've learned doing this visa process and gathering my paperwork and talking to everyone and reading all of these forums is do not believe all these headlines for what they're actually telling you for digital nomad visas. A lot of it actually is false information and you wanna make sure you're not basing any sort of tax situation or a long-term situation for your residency or where you're calling home based on incorrect information. So if you're looking for help with applying for this visa and you're going to be applying from within Spain, please feel free to send me a DM on Instagram or send me an email. All the contact information is below and I can share with you my lawyer's information for anyone who wants to apply from within Spain. But I definitely highly suggest that you get some legal advice or even join some Facebook groups and start reading the forums and start to 
ask the questions that you need and get some help from different consultants and lawyers and other people going through the process because it can be a damn headache. But I hope you guys are enjoying these videos and I hope you're finding value from them and they're super helpful for you when you're looking to apply for these visas. Or even if it's not the Spain visa, I hope this helps you to know the questions to ask for other countries. But if you're enjoying this channel and if you're enjoying all these videos and you are looking forward to the rest of them and my whole process of moving to Spain and also just the daily digital nomad life, please hit the subscribe button, leave a comment below. I love, love, love connecting with you guys and building this community. It means so, so much to me, but I'll catch you guys next video. See you then.